Welcome to Envision Broadcasting, the station designed to encourage, equip, and empower you for growth and success. Thriving Women Talk is the affiliate of the Trendsetter Mentor Group, an exclusive membership for mentorship. You are streaming live with the Thrive Tribe, the number one talk show for thriving women. And here's your host, Andrea Bowenzi. tuning in to the number one talk show for thriving women. We call ourselves the Thrive Tribe because we represent women like you that are progressing, flourishing, and thriving. Our mission each week is to inspire and empower our listeners to thrive, not just survive, on your life's journey. So let's take a moment and introduce you to our Thrive Tribe. This morning we have Noelle Ramos, registered rep for Cap Investments out of Grayson, Georgia. Sabrina Protick, author and certified life coach out of Tampa Bay, Florida. Carmen Miller, attorney at Carmen Miller Law in Holiday, Florida. And then we also have our women business correspondent, Deidre Pittman, tax strategist out of Tampa Bay, Florida. Washington, real estate investor. And Sherry Thompson, financial coach out of Baltimore, Illinois. So we want to thank our local, national, and international listeners for tuning in to Thriving Women Talk Radio. Thriving Women continues to support the scientists, doctors, nurses, firemen, policemen, and all first responders that wake up every morning and night around the world to serve and protect while we continue to do our part and shelter in place. So today's thriving topic is on homeschooling. Why? So around the world, schools in over 100 countries are being closed to protect against the spread of the coronavirus, and it is affecting the educational system of nearly 1 billion children. In the United States, schools were planning to reopen April 6th, but recently 27 state governors have issued orders prohibiting in-person classes at the public and private school level for the remainder of the academic year to help reduce the spread of the coronavirus which has created a need for parents to take on a new role as pop-up homeschools. Until the pandemic closed schools, only a minority of children were taught at home. In the United States, an estimated 1.7 million children were homeschooled out of a national school population of 56.6 million. That's a pretty significant sliver there. Around the world, schools are using existing platforms um, with, from the likes of Microsoft and Google, as well as conferencing apps like Zoom, to deliver lessons to their pupils. But sadly, millions of families don't have that kind of access, whether it's to computers or even the Internet. So that yeah, kind of, we were, <laughs> go ahead, Noelle. That is crazy, because I know you mentioned that millions don't have computers. And now yeah. libraries are closed, and that was the majority of where people would go to use their laptops and mm -hmm. their computers. I mean, I know, you know, it seems kind of antiquated, but I know when I went to school, I used laptops and computers. We went to the library to do our research, but now everything's required on computers, and if you don't have one and the libraries are closed, what are you going to do? So I just want to mention that even though we have this, 5G technology, we still have, you know, we're still, a lot of millions of people are still inaccessible to the education that they're needing for the children just around the world. And 72 million children of primary education age, they're not in school. No, I mean, we were just talking about this right before the show with Sabrina mm -hmm. and um, some of the other ladies. They've closed school for the rest of the year, and many parents are crying. I know, Andrea, you mentioned you were crying because <laughs> <laughs> that's no good. I mean, you have three children at home that are all in school, so, I mean, that's got to be rough. I, I'm pretty, I guess, fortunate or unfortunate. I don't have children, so I don't have to. It doesn't well, affect me too much. Yeah, it's definitely an adjustment. I have three that are completely different ages, so, you know, um, 
I have a three-year-old running around who needs attention all the time, and then a nine-year-old and a 16-year-old. 16-year-old is totally good on his own, um, but it's been it's been a journey. <laughs> right. I know Sabrina is mentioning I'm not volunteering to homeschool kids. She's like, I've paid my dues. I've done it. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so, you know, you have 750 million adults who – are having to adjust to this temporary um, temporary obstacle that we have who probably they're, they're, they're having difficulties themselves. It's a new way of learning. We've, we've taught children how to learn math way differently than we've had to learn math. So they're struggling too, and they're not able to improve sometimes their living conditions. They're not able to improve their ability to have to homeschool their children. So you have adults right. who are struggling – constantly was trying to teach their children. I couldn't imagine trying to teach children the different ways that they've had to learn. And, you know, you know, you mentioned, Andrew, you mentioned uh, pop-up homeschools, and basically that's what everybody has become at their home is a pop-up homeschool, and yeah. many families are really struggling. Uh, so even though they're struggling, you know, most students will get to return to traditional classrooms when this crisis passes, but I think, you know, with some families, they've come to think of this as a different, they have a different thought process now. And they've kind of, with this involuntary experimenting, they may actually consider continuing to keep homeschooling their children as an option. So even though we had this crisis happen, this might be something that these, some parents enjoy doing. It doesn't sound like many in our group have enjoyed or considering this as an option or might continue to enjoy doing. <laughs> but... <laughs> For now, you know, it's, it's, it's an option now. And so for a while now, educators around the world, they, just, they have been talking about the need to rethink how we educate our future generations. And having this disruption, it, it might be that, that little push for the educational, that, that the educational sector needed to get us to rethink how we educate our, our children and kind of just to question what we need to do to teach them and what we're preparing our children for. You know, I think that that brings up some very interesting topics, and we're certainly going to lean into those as the show goes on. Um, you know, we decided to start the conversation on the why, what, and how we as parents can take more responsibility and accountability on our children's education. And, and also, um, I don't want to recreate the wheel. I want to learn from those who have been homeschooled. I want to learn from those who have pioneered homeschooling. Uh, we've got some, we have some teammates that are on our team every week that have had some successful um, homeschooling ventures. You know, they've homeschooled their children. Uh, we have also had some that have been homeschooled, and then we've invited a special guest to join us that going to give us some more insight and I'm excited because I need some help I need some counsel um, I need that mentoring ladies so let's start the conversation with why 1.7 million children are homeschooled in the US just to begin with this is before everything really happened and, and changed it and shifted last month um, Calvert education research stated the top five reasons why parents decided to homeschool their kids. So number one, and I've heard this often, is make a change from a negative school. Um, you know, maybe the environment just wasn't quite right for, for their children. Number two, environment and bullying. So this, I think, kind of goes hand in hand with number one. We all know that bullying is something that is getting out of hand, within the United States at least. And um, many people are struggling to find a, a safe avenue for their children to learn and, and succeed in. So now um, they're taking to homeschooling. Number three reason uh, would be get higher quality education. So now you can take charge of what your children are learning, advance them as you see necessary and fit. Number four, improve social interactions. So you know, maybe spending less time in the classroom and more time out in social settings is going to be an improvement for your children. And the number five reason that people decide, parents decide to homeschool their children 
is to educate children during a family relocation to another state or even country. So I know me personally, I grew up moving around every two to three years, and that meant a new school every two to three years. And then that doesn't include changing from junior high to high school. So by the ninth grade, I was starting my ninth school. Um, my mother did not homeschool us. She was amazing and spent a lot of time with us, you know, after school on art projects and those types of things. But no, we got to go to school every day. <laughs> so I did not, was not homeschooled. But I could see where that would be something that, you know, um, parents would want to just stay consistent on as, as you're relocating and moving schools and cities and states. The curriculum is different each place you go. So to, to um, not skip or, you know, maybe your child not fall behind, you choose to homeschool, make tons of sense. So I wanted to get a personal perspective of homeschooling. So we asked co-host Deidre Pittman to share um, why she homeschooled. And I also know that Sherry Thompson homeschooled as well just during the summer, but I, I wanted to get their views. Um, and Deidre, you also made this decision to do it as a single parent. So I'm excited to have on the show Deidre's daughter, Brittany. So Brittany Macon is joining us today. She's going to also share her perspective of being homeschooled. And uh, not only she was homeschooled, then she attended junior high for a little bit. As I understand, it went back to homeschool, then went through high school. We're going to get her story and on that journey. So in our life strategy segment, um, we also guest Greta Kishbaugh. So she's a parent and professor at St. Peterburg College. She's going to discuss um, how to educate our children in an interconnected world, why we need to start teaching life skills for the future, and why and how to unlock technology to deliver education to our homes. This is something that we're really starting to um, jump into, especially within the last month. Um, technology is a big deal right now. That's how we're doing the distance learning. So we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we will start with why homeschooling matters. We'll be right back. Thriving Women is sponsored by Trendsetter Mentor Group, an exclusive membership for mentorship. TMG is an exclusive Facebook mentoring membership for thriving entrepreneurs with a culture of caring and sharing. TMG's mission is mentoring, inspiring, and empowerment. Now, if you are a thriving entrepreneur and inspired to surround yourself with like-minded peak performers, then join TMG's exclusive membership group on Facebook by sending a member request to the Trendsetter Mentor Group. We are the membership for mentorship. Back to the Thriving Women Talk. Awesome. Welcome to Thriving Women. Our Thriving Women topic is homeschooling. What are the pros and cons? So let's start with the beliefs of homeschooling. I'm sorry, let's start with the benefits of homeschooling. Parents' choice of pace and approach. You're in charge of the schedule, the grade level, the learning approach, the curriculum, and most places, even the graduation requirements. That's interesting. Um, let's lean into meeting the current needs now so you can prioritize your child's mental, emotional, behavioral, and physical health. That's something that I want to speak on a little bit later. Warm family environment. Family is the best foundation for social as well as values and faith development. So the kids are home with you more. They are not picking up those bad habits from others. Deidre, um, You've seen the positive effects homeschooling has had on your daughter, Brittany. Can you share with our listeners as a single parent um, the sole responsibilities and, and why and how did your why and how did you homeschool your daughter? Sure, Andrea, I'd be great to share because I love homeschool. Now, let me just clarify. Though I was a single parent, I was not alone. I had the full support of my mom and dad, Brittany's grandparents that were there to help me. So I was a single mom, but thank God I wasn't alone. And it's so funny how I um, decided to homeschool, Britt. At the time, I was in college. 
Um, and I actually wanted to one day own my own um, daycare center. So part of my college education was to have to do, I guess, for lack of a better word, you know, clinicals in a daycare environment. And once I went through that experience and saw what was going on, I was like, oh, uh-uh, no way that my baby's, you know, coming into this kind of environment. You know, the kids were um, fighting for the teacher's attention. You know, it just mm. wasn't the type of environment that I wanted for Brittany. So, sure. and then my grandmother um, sent me this book. She had no idea, and she sent me a book called Homegrown Kids. And I read that book, and I was like, okay, this is this is what I need to do. Um, this, this is what's going to work, you know, for us. And let me say that homeschooling is just not for everybody. I love it, but it's, it's really not for everybody. So um, that's why I homeschooled Brett. And the way I homeschooled her, I started when she was young. She was, you know, 18 months to two years old. I mean, look, Andrea, you have the little three-year-old running around. Their attention span yep. is not that long. So what you do is nope. you make you know you make it fun. There we would um, learn by me walking down the steps with her, and we count the steps as we walk. One, two, three. You know, okay, um, it's time to clean up clean up your room. Pick up all of the toys that are red. So that's yeah. how we were learning colors. So it's just little things like that. I mean, to be honest, homeschooling is really not as hard as you may, as you know, you may think it is. It really is. Well, and I think that that's something that's interesting. You say it that way. You know, we sing little songs to remember things. Um, you know, he, he learned the colors of the stoplight um, <laughs> just by singing a song. <clears throat> Excuse me. And washing his hands and other things. He, he can count to 10 in English and in Spanish. That's awesome. Um, so we do things, you know, we do things together that, you know, many people are just like, well, it's just something you do. You sing the ABCs, you, you know, whatever. Um, so that is the easy part for me. But yeah. the part that I struggle with is <laughs> keeping him entertained <laughs> while trying to help my nine-year-old. <laughs> right. So that's, that's my struggle. Jerry, um, I wanted to ask you to lean in because you have mentioned in the past that you've homeschooled your children in the summer months and you have just, first of all, you've got an amazing relationship with your children. I, I love watching you guys interact Thank you. Um, in person and on Facebook. Um, so I wanted to ask you, why did you decide to continue that schedule, you know, from the school year through summer and what was your experience? You know what, and, it, and it's, I, I hear what Deidre's saying, I hear what you're saying, you know, I had a home daycare um, for a while, and all the kids that came through, by the time they went to first, to first grade, you know, they were reading, I mean, I did all that, I just loved it. And I think it's different when you get to homeschool voluntarily than when you have to. Because <laughs> when it's voluntary, you know, you, you set everything up, you're excited about it, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, you know, we're going to get all these things done. And it's totally different when you're thrown into the, the hat where you have to do it. So my heart, you know, goes mm -hmm. out to these um, um, females, males, whoever's homeschooling, and you just got, got thrown into there. It's tough. It really is. With me, it was voluntary. The reason I did it during the summer, though, is that, my mom. My mom was a, a school teacher for 40 years. Before that, she was a nurse, but she would always say that her first two months, when they started school in September, she said the first two months were spent relearning what they learned the previous year. <laughs> so she was saying, you know, if, if these kids would, would learn something during the summer or keep it in their mind during the summer, they wouldn't have to come and relearn everything. So the, my thought in mm -hmm. my head was that, okay, then I'm going to give them school all year round so that they will, they'll be a step ahead when they go back to school. Now, I really wanted to homeschool them. My oldest one wanted to go to school, you know, so I didn't fight with them because what one was going to do, I was going to have all of them do. But I, I made sure that they got that learning in the, in the summer of all the things they learned over the year. But like I said, what it is, when it was volunteer for me, I had a schedule. I had a real strict schedule. I mean, everybody in the house now, I had a 2-year-old this, at this time and a 12-year-old. Um, and even before the, the, the two-year-old was born, before then, everybody got up at 6 a.m. Everybody did. 6 a.m., it was almost like the military. We did our chores. We went outside. We did our PT. Everybody had to run a mile. You know, the boys shot faster. <laughs> so we had an hour of, 
and, you know, them actually being moving. And that, that really got them going, you know, because of, it's early in the morning. They don't want to really go and do anything. It's summertime. And first thing they're thinking, oh, we just want to go outside and play. So I had to catch them before they saw their friends outside. You know, so we would get up at 6, you know, we would go do our exercise. we get back home by about 7, 7.15. They eat breakfast and they start on their work. We did work, and it's like, like you said, it's different because it's different ages. So, But I had stations set up so that they can all, you know, work according to what their age was. The older boys could just do the work. I just have to have the work there for them. Mm-hmm. But the younger ones, I have to make them more creative. But it really is, isn't having that schedule. But then by 12, 30, 1 o'clock, they were done. The, the young ones were taking a nap, and the big boys were outside. But I just saw the importance of, you know, keeping their mind thinking. Because, you know, in the summertime, even as adults, for, for the, some of the adults that are off work and don't necessarily, I would say, have to work, you know, they're waiting for their job to come back, our brains can turn to mush if we just, you know, we're not using them. And it's just not looking at, at magazines for fun. You know, it's, it's, we actually have to start reading things to make our mind think, to make us retain. There's a difference in that type of reading. So I don't want the kids' brains to turn to mush because, uh, and especially now, we're in a video game world. Man, we love mm. video games. I mean, I, I sit down, and I, I used to play them with them until they start to beat me. Then I don't play them anymore because I don't like getting beat. <laughs> But we can easily, you know, get to that point. But it is, it's all in the system. I just saw there was a reason for it to keep their mind sharp even all through the year to know that your brain is not supposed to take a break. I mean, it really isn't. It can take a, a time out for a few minutes, you know, when we sleep, but not that break where we stop, you know, thinking and stop learning. So that was my right. reason for doing it. And it's, it, it, it is, it's a schedule, and you just got to keep that schedule. I mean, it really is. It's like the military. We have a schedule for jobs. We have a schedule yep. for entrepreneurs. You know, everything is on the schedule, so we have to keep these kids on that same schedule. And you find out they actually like it. They just don't let you know in the first couple of weeks. Right. But they <laughs> right. love being on that schedule. <laughs> there you have some summer back. boot camp going on. I know. I oh, I had some boot camp coming. Oh, I loved it. I, I look oh. forward to it. My kids, my kids would complain to their friends. I said, well, and I would always tell them. Well, Mom, Johnny doesn't have it, and I always ask them, what's your last name? And then they couldn't say anything else. Because <laughs> the next time, this is what we're going to do. It was fun, though. But it is, it's all, like I said, it's, it's having that, that system, you know, having that schedule. As adults, we have to keep schedule, so as kids, we have to teach them the very same thing. So it was great. Yeah. I loved it. They loved it. They talk about it now, and they, they brag about it now. You know, they didn't then, but they brag about it now, and they actually enjoyed it. They did. That's a great experience. I, I think she's scary like with some say, boots on much. and her whistle on, blowing the whistle at 6, 6 a.m. Everybody get up! There it is. That's right. And I, you know what? That's funny because I play, I did, I started with music. And my son just said the other day, Mom, every time I hear that song, I think we're about to go outside and run. <laughs> 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 like, no, not this time. But you got to make this fun. You know what I mean? You got to make this fun. They're traumatized. They're traumatized. Okay, Dana, I got to get you in on this. So we were, we had like this tech group going the other day. We're talking about homeschooling. And I was, it was 10 o'clock in the morning. It was not even 10 o'clock in the morning. And I was already looking for some wine. I will. You guys, I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> I'm starting this off. I am not. But it is so challenging with my nine-year-old daughter to do the homework. And um, Dana, you were saying that you were struggling to help your daughter with her third-grade math. Girl, yes, I'm right there. Um, yes. How are you surviving? What's going on? Show me your. Tell me your secret. <laughs> well, this was 24 years ago. Um, my daughter is now well, 24. Well, my daughter is now 24. So this took place around 2005, 2006, and she was in, I think, third or fourth grade. But I'm telling you, it's just not for me. It takes a lot of patience. Um, and she came home with math homework, and my first thought was. My husband and I was just getting home from work, and she was already at home. You know, we we had full-time jobs, and, you know, she just had to go to school and come home and do her start homework. Well, as soon as we walk in the house, she 
I could tell she was really frustrated about math. And so at the time, I had just completed my bachelor's degree. So I'm thinking, oh, what do you need? I, I know, I know. Um, so she started showing me her homework, and I immediately got on the defensive side, and I'm thinking, I don't know what kind of new math this is, but this is not what I learned, period. And I almost wanted to say, your teacher doesn't know what she's talking about, but I had to not say that because my daughter loved her teacher, and I didn't want to, you know. <laughs> right. I don't want to talk about her teacher. But um, those math problems, I could not figure them out at all. And I wanted to learn at that particular moment. And she was frustrated. I was irritated. And luckily for me, my husband being an engineer, he was able to step in and help with the math. And here's the thing. She, she's a top math student. Math is her thing. But algebra at fourth grade, third grade level, no. No. I, I was just, like, baffled. Like, why are you doing this type of math work? Who is this teacher? What is this school? Uh, not yet. But um, I had to step back, take a breather, because I could tell that my frustration was causing more anxiety for her. So, no, I did not master the home school. I didn't master the homework helping teacher, <laughs> let alone trying to attempt to uh, homeschool. Um, I did not attempt to homeschool because um, I was working so I had off to those women who, you women who were able to protect this thing because it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, it's um, it's not my favorite thing right now. And I think part of it is because I don't have the, the strict schedule. We've got a schedule, but Sherry, you've inspired me to write something out, post it up on the wall where everybody can see, and we're just going to go off of that. Um, because it, it is a challenge, and we were just thrown into it. You know, it's not something that I got to really mentally prepare myself for. And I'm an entrepreneur, so I love to think that I'm a creative thinker, but right now, I can't. I can't. <laughs> I don't know what it is. So it's been interesting. Um, Deidre, I had a question for you. You had mentioned that you decided to switch from homeschooling um, right about the junior high age. What made you decide to do that? I decided to do it because Brittany asked me if she could um, attend traditional school. And with much um, prayer, um, I felt that she was ready. I felt that the foundation had been laid. So mm-hmm. I felt that um, that she was ready. But it was just as simple as her saying, hey, Mom, you know, can I go to, re-? she called her real school. <laughs> She's yeah. like, hey, Mom, you know, can I go to real school? So she did, and she did great. That's interesting. And so did did she stay into the real school atmosphere all the way through the end of high school, or did she ever come back at any time? Well, what happened, um, the second part of junior high, see, I transitioned her from homeschool into a small, a very small private um, Christian school. So... Mm -hmm. After the she so she went her first semester of junior high there, but I pulled her back out uh, because I just wasn't happy with what was going on. So I pulled her back out and I homeschooled her until she went to ninth grade. So from ninth grade all the way on to two master's degrees, she was in real school. <laughs> awesome, awesome, exciting. Okay, so that gives me some something to look forward to. Yeah. yeah and- Andrea, if I could chime in a little bit. Um, Yeah, and what's so great now about social media and our techno-driven world is Mm -hmm. you can go to YouTube and it will walk you through how to do just about anything. And one site that I really like is called Khan Academy, K-H-A-N Academy, and you can learn world history. 
um, how to add fractions. You know, you, you can get all these major subjects. And, you know, of course, my child, you know, she's in her 20s as well, and I didn't homeschool her, but if she ever had an issue, like, with the Pythagorean theorem, you know, or something like that, yeah, you know, yeah. put it, you know, cast it on the, the you know, the, the living room channel, so I'm, you know, watching what she's doing, so she's not, you know, uh, uh, you know, playing games or whatever, but cast right. it. And just, you know, hey, this is what it is. This is why it's around. This is, I'm going to walk you through this particular, you know, problem. And then, you know, uh, turn around and just apply it. So, you know, technology can, can help in a lot of ways as well. It, you know, it does. And you're right. Um, my daughter is sucked into technology all the time. And, and part of my struggle, and let me, I need to back up a little bit. My daughter does not like school at all. She hates it. She thinks it's a waste of time, um, doesn't have any – she's been struggling since day one. And a lot of that has to do with her self-esteem. Her poor little heart has just been shattered, and she's just rebuilding and regrouping, and it's been a struggle for her. So school is the last thing she wants to do right now. So unless it's fun, um, unless fun games that are on her Chromebook or maybe a, a fun little YouTube, like, channel skit or something – She's really just like, nah, not interested, not doing it. And we have knocked down, dragged down fights. So I think that's a whole other phone call, you know, with somebody else that can help, you know, with the therapy through that. But let me tell you, um, technology has certainly helped us along the way, but it's, there's, it's kind of like a two-part series there. So we're going to take a quick little break. Um, when we return from our sponsor break, Deidre's daughter, Brittany, is going to share her insight on homeschooling, and um, we'll have more opportunities to lean in. So we'll be right back. Thriving Women Life Strategies is powered by Women Entrepreneur Empowerment, commonly called WE, W-E-E. The organization's mission is empowering women entrepreneurs through a platform of visibility, education, strategic growth and development within the networking arena. Their doors are open to women of all ages, millennials, new startups, small businesses, and those thriving or needing a boost. If you're committed to excellence and you want to know more about the WE platform, message founder Sabrina Pote on Facebook or email her at www.agelesstechniques.com. Back to Thriving Women Talk. Great. Thank you, and welcome back to Thriving Women Talk. If you just tuned into the show, we have discussed the pros and cons of homeschooling, and we've inv invited Brittany Macon, former homeschool student, um, and also Greta Kishwa, professor at St. Peter's St. Petersburg College, to our show today. Um, welcome to Thriving Women, ladies. We value and we're looking forward to your insights and both of your different perspectives on homeschooling. I wanted to start the conversation with Brittany. Would you mind sharing with us what you felt the benefits were for you being homeschooled? Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me on the show. Um, you know, I'm, I'm an old school homeschooler. My mom was an early adopter. I'm in my 40s. I'll be 41 in June. So I was a kid of the 80s, and definitely the benefits of homeschooling for me was that I was able to learn at my own pace and in my own personal learning style. So mom would tailor the curriculum for me and my needs, and so we were able to set that pace um, for me to learn. I didn't have to um, compete with other kids in the classroom, yeah. vying for the teacher's attention, um, mom was able to focus on me, and then because I was an, an only child, um, I didn't have other siblings there um, as well uh, to compete with. So I would say definitely just being able to learn in my own style. I'm a slow learner, and I need a lot of details. I'm very analytical, and so mom was able to match my learning style. You know, I think that's great. Um, can you... I'm glad that you recognize that, and maybe you didn't immediately. You probably, mm -hmm. you know, that's over time. You're like, ah, this is why we did it the way we did. Mm -hmm. Did you ever feel 
on the outside of school, did you ever feel any pressure from your peers um, for not attending public school? Um, my peers, we would play together when they got home from traditional school and I was done mm -hmm. with my homeschool lessons for the day. So we would play together and I would get questions like, well, why don't you attend real school? And I would say, well, my mommy, you know, she wants to homeschool me. Um, I was just, I just felt confident in mom's decision yeah. to homeschool me. And I was confident telling my peers, well, this is what my mother decided to do for me. You know, I understand you enjoy going to real school and that's great, but this is just what we're doing, what we're doing right now. So um, I think because I felt confident in it, the other, my peers accepted it like, okay, well, Britt's the homeschooled kid. And I wasn't looked at as being the oddball out. Um, and I, I attended, actually, I attended two days a week. Um, a group of other homeschool kids would get together. So that's where we had, like, our social interaction. We would do um, arts and crafts and different things and maybe things we didn't do, you know, at home with our parents. We would get together mm -hmm. and have the, that weekly social interaction. So to me, that was like a taste of real school as well. Yeah. Awesome. That's, that's amazing, Brittany. So not everyone probably agrees with homeschooling yeah. because they, yeah, I mean, you, 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 your mom did a great job. You know, she, she um, got you to where you were seeing other children, but some people think that homeschooling is kind of stunting children's growth mm -hmm. because they, they don't, that they just don't see the other peers around their age levels in their in the early years. So based on your experience, what would you kind of say to that person? Well, yeah, unfortunately, uh, homeschooling, sometimes there is a negative stereotype. I remember seeing this movie. I forgot. I think it was Mean Girls. And the main character, <laughs> she was yeah. homeschooled. <laughs> and they showed, like, the negative per perception of homeschool kids, like, you know, your, your backwards, uh, your parents are these, like, religious nuts, just, you know, you're in a cult. And I, I really took mm -hmm. offense to that. And I don't feel that my growth was – stunned it at all. Even if I didn't attend those weekly sessions with the other homeschool kids, I still had my friends and our community that I played with and interacted with um, after school hours. Um, so I don't think you're stunting your, your kids growth at all. Now on the flip side, I have a friend that was homeschooled and it was just her and her brother and her mom kept them in the house. They really didn't have a structured curriculum so unfortunately I feel like my friend was stunted in that way because maybe her mom didn't have the proper tools and the resources or the passion to really get out there and help her kids to not be stunted so it, it comes down to the parent and what how much they're willing to invest um, in that child to make sure that that doesn't happen and they're not stunted right thank you Brittany I think yeah we just need to find that well balanced mm -hmm. environment thank you Brittany sure Brittany Brittany, this also brings to mind another question. You know, you've had experiences in both sides of it. Mm -hmm. Some kids don't. Some, mm -hmm. some kids, their parents know from birthday one when they're brought into this world, we're going to homeschool. Mm -hmm. And other parents kind of figure that out along the way like your mother did. So you're kind of the perfect person for this question, you know, with, with, with the transition now that parents really don't have an option mm -hmm. because of the COVID-19 and some of yeah. these children are having to, they're forced into this transition period. Uh, you know, what would you suggest, H how would you help them deal with this transition from, you know, you went from uh, homeschool to high school or high school to homeschool. You kind of went through that transition. Okay. What, what kind of advice would you put out there for parents and, and particularly for the, the children? Maybe some of them are listening because they're home now. What kind yeah. of advice would you give them for that whole transition piece? Well, I definitely feel um, for the parents. Um, I personally, my husband and I, we do not have children yet. Hopefully, prayerfully soon, we will. But I'm hearing from my friends who are thrown into this homeschool thing because of COVID, and my heart really goes out to them. Um, uh, because their children were in traditional school, I realize that they have certain educational standards they have to meet. They have to do uh, so many projects, uh, homework, uh, meet a certain number of hours. So 
mom was able to just free flow with me and set my curriculum. She wasn't under this pressure to, to meet those, those strict requirements um, for their kids to move on to the next level and even graduate since I was allowed to move at my own pace. But, you know, I would say just, just take the pressure off. At the end of the day, it's going to be okay. You know, if they haven't turned in that 10th, you know, math assignment, just take a break. Um, like my mom suggested, come up with a creative way to maybe reteach the assignment um, because these parents are trying to hold down the ones that are still employed, hold down going to work, um, teach the kids, um, the teachers are stressed out, and I think they just they just need to be a little bit more lax, you know, and just come up with some creative alternative ways and, and use those resources that some of the um, other callers talked about, uh, Khan Academy. Um, YouTube just to kind of take some of the pressure off of the parents to tap into those resources. And so I felt like my transition from homeschool to to junior high, it was easy because I wanted to go to school. Um, I loved learning. Um, I really did feel like what I saw on TV, like on Saved by the Bell and how school would be, I'm like, that's the way it's going to be for me, and I'm excited, and I want to go, and I want to join social clubs and, and be on the school newspaper. So because I was excited about that, um, it made the transition um, very easy for me. I enjoyed school. I have fond memories of school. I'm that person that went to their 20-year reunion, you know, with bells on blazing. So I'm just an educational nerd in that way. But again, because of the great foundation that my mom laid and in investing that time and that love and that nurturing for me, she just, she just prepared me and set me up for success. And I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for her. Okay, Brittany. That's Mama. <laughs> I, I love you too, and I can't be crying on the phone here, okay? Aww. Well, I'm crying too. <laughs> well, let's roast the marshmallows here. <laughs> Brittany, I want, I want to chime in on that. I want to chime in on that real quick because I do know your mother, uh-huh. and I know uh, when it's when it's time for business. I'm not gonna say business. I'm gonna say business. <laughs> <laughs> when, it's, when it's time for business, it's time for business with Mr. Uh-huh. Uh, Deirdre Pittman. So I imagine that a schedule had a lot to do with that and in terms of being successful. Just Can you just kind of tune yes. us into that a little bit? I mean, like I said, it was free-form learning, my pace, but she did have a schedule. You know, she used the Abeka, um curriculum for me, and so it was a Christian-based curriculum. And so I had, you know, okay, you know, from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., you know, it's history. And then the next hour, you know, maybe language arts. And then, you know, I had a lunch break. Um, and then, like I said, I would play on my own, but then I have my, my scheduled playtime after as well to, to coincide with my friends who are in traditional school. So I could get that interaction. But mom was a, a stickler about a schedule. And as long as I got my work done, the schedule could vary. You know, I mean, one day it might be four hours. The next day it might be two. So she had me on a schedule, but she was also able to go with the flow, you know, and recognize maybe I was having a bad day and I wasn't focusing as much. So she would adjust it because she was in tune with what I needed as well. Excellent, excellent. Thank you for that transition piece. I'm sure all the parents out there appreciate that. <laughs> Whatever help they can get, right? Thank yeah. you, Brittany. You're welcome. <laughs> and you know, you know, Brittany, I have a um, a good friend of mine that um, uh-huh. she homeschooled ten kids. Ten. Oh wow, literally ten kids. She she's still homeschooled. I know, and she did it from day one. And uh-huh. like you said, her thing was you know schedule, schedule, schedule. I mean, she was. I tell her she's a mother of all mothers. I wish I was that great. But in watching her, you know, I really want to homeschool my kids more. But I had my oldest was a introvert. He followed me everywhere I went. The second mm-hmm. oldest was a social <laughs> butterfly. So and then the, when the other two came along, they fit themselves in between. But they all love sports, so they like being in school. So they preferred being in school. So mm-hmm. what advice would you give parents that really, really are considering homeschooling? 
But those kids are like, man, mom, I want to go with my friend. Yeah. They say, I want to go with my friend. Uh-huh. What advice would you give those parents? Okay, those parents definitely need to listen to their kids. And so, you know, if if it was my child, I would say, okay, I understand. You really want to go to, to school, real school, and I want to homeschool you. So how about this? You know, you go to you go to traditional school, you know, see how you like it. If at any time, you know, you want to revisit whole, homeschooling, let's talk about that together. But I would be supportive of what they wanted to do. I would listen um, to my child. You know, of course, as, right. as long as they're, you know, they're doing well, they're not getting, you know, bullied or anything like that, because I had a very positive right. traditional school experience as well. So um, listen to your kid, but, you know, let them know that, hey, we can also explore homeschooling if you change your mind, you know, so they won't feel like they're stuck in that decision if they change their mind. Okay, got you, got you. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Brittany. I appreciate You're welcome. It. You're welcome. So I was hoping we could get um, Carmen to lean in a little bit. And, well, you know, uh, um, Andrea, why don't I ask Brittany that question? Yeah, that would be awesome. Uh oh. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it, Ma. Go ahead. So, Brittany, mm-hmm. you, you've earned your degree, your degrees, and it appears you have a great relationship with me. Your mama. (laughs) 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 You've um, elected to work at Tax Divas. Yeah, you guys, that's a whole nother show. But anyway, um, (laughs) do you think that homeschooling helped our relationship? And what would um, be your advice to millions of um, students being homeschooled? Um, I feel like it was just an enhancement. You know, before Before homeschooling, um, we were already close, Um, and then as you homeschooled me, you know, of course we got even closer. So I would definitely say that it did help. It did help our relationship because you were you respected me as a little person. You know, like you knew when to treat me like a kid. You were that protective mama. But you also knew how I operated. You know, you knew I was an introvert. You know, you knew I didn't warm up. To people right away you didn't you nurtured me as an individual you didn't force me to be something that I wasn't so because you laid the foundation of being such a great mom whether you were homeschooling or doing anything else that helped our relationship blossom and that's why we're the you know we're joined at the hip you know where we are today that's why you have one of my kidneys lady okay yep. so <laughs> Uh, 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 still in the teeth. <laughs> I didn't hesitate. I was like, I got a, I got a spare one. Let me give it to mom. But um, you know, to, to the students out there who are being homeschooled, you know, especially the ones that are old enough to understand, you know, your parents are human too. You know, be mm-hmm. patient with them. You know, they're trying their best. Cut them some slack. They were once your age too. You know, and so I think as long as parents and kids keep it, you know, real with each other, they can they can have a very successful, you know, homeschooling experience. You just got to set that foundation like, you know, hey, I'm your teacher, but I'm, you know, your parent first. You can come and you can talk to me, you know, and and we'll get through this together. That's great, Brett. That's, (laughs) that's, that's That's some good advice. And I'm glad to hear you say that because I'm sure my grandchildren, when they do come, will be homeschooled. Thank you. Love you. <laughs> That's another conversation. <laughs> but... <laughs> Shameless plug. You know, I think it's so special. I work with my dad. We're partners as well in our business. And um, I love that you get to work with your mom and you guys have that relationship. And it is different. Um, it's it's very unique, and some people are like, God, that's so great, you get to work with your dad, and other people are like, don't you ever want to have time away from your dad? The answer is no. <laughs> you know? So, um, also, I think that's an, another that's another time, another conversation. Um, but I thank you, Brittany, for sharing and, and leaning welcome. in because I think you've given some really sound advice, and it's very great. refreshing to to hear that and uh, I know I took some notes and I hope other listeners are out there taking some notes as well so we appreciate you awesome thank you everyone 
Well, You're and very I, welcome. I would like to add that, you know, as a parent, you should never trust the school to completely educate your child, you right. know. So, you know, and I remember, um, you know, going around, even on Facebook, you know, there's some schools, you know, in Texas, <laughs> um, you know, oh, slavery was really cool. You know, it wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah, don't have your child walking around thinking, you know, yeah. stuff that is kind of, you know, no, nah, no, dude. So, you know, just like what Sherry was saying earlier about, you know, hey, I homeschooled my, my children over the summer, you know, and I thought about it, and I thought, I guess I kind of did with my daughter, too, because I would have her read books and read things about civil rights or watch the Eyes on the Prize series and Let's Watch Roots and, you know, just trying to make sure that she was a well-rounded person, and even with the movies we watched, you know, I, I Honey, you need to see The Godfather. I want you to be able to casually drop something in a conversation. Um, so, you know, just to, <laughs> so that she understands that, you know, there's more to life than, than just school, but there's also, you know, being social. There's also, you know, being educated, which isn't necessarily school. It could be, you know, community service projects that you, you know, you take your child to go do or going to a museum, you know, once a month to, to get, in, you know, into, into art and things like that. So, you know, just just don't think that the school is going to do everything. You as a parent right, right. Have to take your own role here and make sure that you, you know, engage your child enough so that they know that they're, you know, there's lots of aspects of the world to know about. You know, and I think that's great. Um, that's great information and, and just great insight, Carmen, because just because our kids are going to school doesn't mean our jobs are done. You know, it, it's... It's not your job just only to birth your child and get them to school appropriate age and feed them and, and keep them alive, you know, and, and get them to school and pick them up after school. It, as a parent, as a mother, um, your job is really never ending. And there's always constant learning opportunities, whether it's movies or help in the kitchen or out doing yard work. Um, you know, we're, we're constantly teaching our kids. And, and I was joking um, <laughs> The other day, we were talking about science, you know, and home ec. And, and Alexi, she's nine. She's thinking, what is this? What's, what's home ec, mom? And so oh, we're, we're going to bake a cake. We, we made a cake for her brother. Um, and, you know, so, okay, get out the measuring cups. And having her actually participate in yes. doing those things, okay, now we're using math. And so yes. mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. just be creative in different ways and different lessons. Um, and make it fun because she was all about baking and she was all about helping me with banana bread and making the brownies and you know now she's really getting into dinners and, and dinner planning so it's like okay I've found what gets her excited I just need to Perfect. kind of Perfect. work on expanding that so Perfect. Yeah, we have yeah. to switch gears because we could talk about this forever and we haven't hardly ever got we didn't even get to talk to Greta yet so Greta <laughs> I apologize I'm sorry. Um, we have you. That, on that's the line okay. To I could talk forever. <laughs> <laughs> Greta, Greta could talk forever. So, well, Greta, I'm I'm sorry, man. We've got so much to talk about. Share with our listeners. Where were you when they closed the schools? What were you doing? Was it some pivotal moment? And you know, what were you thinking? What were your thoughts there? Well, let me just piggyback. I think it was Carmen that was saying that our school day does not end at the end of the day. So I'm yes. fortunate enough where I put my boys. I have two boys, seven and nine, or seven and eleven, and I put them in daycare. So when school's over, they go to like a karate studio type place where there's soccer, karate, and all that. And at the end of the day, when they come home from that, you know, the whole homework, just so you know, schools now, they, they don't spend a lot of time in the classroom doing work. So my 11-year-old is always bringing home something every night that needs expansion upon. So the teacher might say, hey, here's how you write a fictional story. But he has to come home and that night spend a good hour, an hour and a half. And it's not homework. I don't think of it as homework. I think of it as an expansion of his work. So right before spring break started here, 
we he had a huge scientific project he had to do one of those big scientific boards and all that and we literally turned the scientific board on and then of course all of this happened so we immediately the next day even during spring break I immediately put them on a schedule just to get them into the shape of things and that worked for two weeks until the teachers started providing curriculum so that was hard and and the technology has not been here in Pinellas County in Pinellas County Florida the technology has been a disaster Disaster. The thing mm -hmm. the Microsoft Teams has hardly worked, so it's really hard to get the kids to focus now when they'll go to sure. an online thing and it's like not working. And that's it. I've lost them. My seven-year-old yep. would better be outside. So, so the hardest part, I think. But let me just tell you real quick. I won't take too much time. My 11-year-old has been the victim of bullying on many occasions, and oh. I brought up homeschooling last year. And even with the bullying and the issues he's having. He wants to go to school. <laughs> so we've had this conversation a couple of times, and I think it's just the, but yeah, school, like you guys were saying, the Khan Academy, all that stuff comes home with the kids. So they might be in school. The best part about the homeschooling the last month and a half has been no interruptions. My kids have already had to write two essays on what they like about homeschooling, and they both included the fact that there are no interruptions, that they're getting their work done, they don't have like four minutes that they got to go to PE, come back to the classroom, four minutes to art, four minutes. The, the disruptions in the classroom are really getting bad these days because the teachers have to cover so much. So my boys are actually, that's what, they love the fact that they can sit down, do the work, and then there's some kind of reward when they're finished or we, we go outside for a walk or we do what we got to do. So, but what I want to homeschool, and we can talk about that later, but right now that's what's working for us. We're trying to stay to a schedule. We're trying to get the things done. My only complaint is my seven-year-old has to sit through one-hour webinars, and it's, he's not. That's not working. And I'm not taking the parent credit for that because <laughs> he's seven. You know, I'm trying to think what I did at seven. I was still eating rocks, uh, riding my bike and eating rocks, you know. And, and um, so we have to put ourselves, and I'm really glad that Brittany mentioned that, we have to put ourselves in the role of parent and teacher at this time, but we have to make it really clear when we're in that role and I think it's just yeah. as simple as setting up a schedule that's what's been working for us we start it right at 8 30 we start this and the mommy's got this and daddy's my husband is also working from home so we're both here working from home um, and and that's working the schedule is working are they a little frustrated right now when the news came down on we got the email Sunday night we got the email from the superintendent of schools that school was canceled for the rest of the term and I cried <laughs> like we were talking about was it Andrea is that who's crying yeah, Somebody, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think it was that was the frustration and I did get my five dollar wine that I bought at Target and I opened it up and my husband's like you're becoming an alcoholic I said, that's fine I'm trying to think of what my parents did back in the day to get through and I think they were alcoholics but anyway <laughs> um, just, just trying to add light to the fact that now when we got the news it was it was like okay now it's just time to either regroup or stick with what you're doing. The kids are really bummed because they miss their friends. So I yeah. think if, even if you homeschool somebody, and, and my son has been taking online classes. Here in Florida, there are so many online classes they can take for free. And he's doing those through the Florida Virtual School just to improve his work and get him a little head. And he's going to start middle school Hopefully August, everything is back open, and he starts middle school for the first time, and it's going to be a culture shock. He's going to go from what? Getting his work done in a quiet environment to eight periods a day, 1,000. Mm -hmm. There are 1,100 students in the school he's going to, and something like 400 and 500 in the sixth grade alone. So we'll see what happens. But he has been the victim of bullying, and we've gotten through that. Um, my interesting thing, and I think you guys are going to ask me, is just at St. Petersburg College, I teach adults online, and they okay. seem to be the ones struggling the most. Um, they seem to be struggling because their schedules have been so uprooted. For those of us who take online classes in college, we take them because we do have kids and we have multiple right. jobs and and they have been they're suffering the most and my students are they're, they're suffering um, because now their schedules have been some of them aren't working and um, so so that's been a struggle so sorry I could talk forever sorry <laughs> <laughs> so 
I know you mentioned like uh, you mentioned like even with the homeschooling that once you know the kids the kids day is not done your day is not done and people you know it's not just ending with you know just because school's over you're done so it's it's pretty stressful having to deal with the homeschooling and having to juggle profession and even trying to work from remotely it, it's not easy so I I know you mentioned your online college professor. Uh, how are you dealing with, like, the dis- are, are you having a lot of, um, I guess, interruptions from your children? Are they able to give you your time? And I know you've mentioned, you know, a lot that you have the schedule and you're trying to stick to the schedule, but kids will be kids. And how are you coping with, you know, the kids being home and, and are they allowing you to follow your schedule so you can continue to work remotely from home as well? Yeah, I, I think it has been good. I think we're going to see not just education. I think we're going to see a lot of people uh, request to work from home. And, and I'm, I'm going to tell you why they know I already do live talks to my students because I've been online teaching for 15 years. And they, they kind of are already used to the video equipment. We have video equipment everywhere. Um, they do YouTube videos. So they're used to that. Quiet on the set. They know what that means. So they've been great. But what has helped a lot is that everybody else is going through this. So if a kid automatically appears in a video screen, they, everybody laughs. You know, it's not, yeah. you know, if this is if it's a multi-million dollar contract you're signing, obviously you don't want the kids appearing in your video. But I think that flexibility that we're all going through the same thing um, where, you know, I've had students that are, they don't have areas in their home where they can set up a camera that look good. There might be laundry in the background. There may be kids running, dogs. Dogs have been making appearances on all kinds of, of videos. I think the dogs are there. It's a little harder because when you're talking, your dog wants you to listen to them. So yeah, you know, the guy on the news here, there's a local guy that does the weather from home now. And the dog, everyone wants to see the dog and the dog's on every night now. He has to bring the dog in and make sure we all see the dog. He's adorable. So um, they've been great. I think you, but I think you have to establish that. You have to establish when mommy's on the computer and she's got her headphones on, that's the time to not ask for Cheetos. You know, so we go get Cheetos <laughs> right. ahead of time. And one thing I've done, you guys will laugh. My house is always a disaster anyway. My house is never clean. Well, not clean, but clean, but scattered. So we literally have all the snacks are laid out. We have all, we have an art table. We have a table where, where, where there's paper, extra paper. We have a computer. Ta- we have just totally taken over, like everybody said, that you guys used the phrase in the beginning, house, house swap. What do you call it when your house turns into a pop-up, pop-up school? Pop-up. Yeah, we've yep. got our whole living room and dining room, like everyone else, is this pop-up school. And I've got stations because that's what they're used to in school. They're used to stations. They're used to like, okay, there's the reading station over there. There's the art station over there. And especially for my seven-year-old, he's still in that, you know, pr- you know, below, you know, area where it, they have centers. They have a center for this, a center for home ec. They have a center for drawing. They have a center, and that's work too. So we've just got centers all over the place, and moving from center to center has really helped out. And the experiential stuff too. We will take time out to bake a cake. Uh, they asked us, the, par- the teachers asked us to go out last week and do a scavenger hunt in the neighborhood, and, and that stuff's really helped. So try to get out, you know. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> talk too much. No, I could talk all day. I'm like, that's all I do is talk. I feel like sometimes, but yeah, that stick no on that problem. schedule. I'm the, very, I'm the very same way. I can I can talk all day. Uh, we're talking about, you know, <laughs> I think we all can. Being online, yeah, no problem. Things being online, you know, making videos, um, you know, doing a lot of things through videos. But when I think about graduation, you know, I think about my my college graduation think about my high school graduation they were both great and then here in Illinois you know it's it's different they even have eighth grade graduation I don't agree with it but I mean that's what they have it's kind of hard to video everybody in their own cap and gown and say hey look at all of us graduating so um well you know what is your school doing to deal with graduation are they going to have a just a traditional type of graduation or what type of graduation are they going to have and then what kind of impact do you think that's going to have even on your your students or even your kids when it gets to the point of their graduation if they can't do it in a ceremony that's a that's a great question i teach 
I teach for two schools right now. I'm teaching also for Valencia College in Orlando, and they are going to do the virtual. They're going to try the virtual. But that's a different group. That's a group of bachelor students, and, and I also teach in the lower division. So the bachelor students are really looking forward to this virtual thing, and it's for two purposes. Wow. They don't have space. Don't forget, there's no space to have an event right now. Nobody is offering right. space for an event, so that's a huge. But I think um, now St. Petersburg College is a bachelor's program and we get a lot of transfer students, it is going to hurt St. Pete College because it re it's really hard to get the students to come to graduation already. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, it, it's okay. really hard. Uh -huh. We have a lot of people who come in, they only do an AA or they come in to get transfer credits for another college. So we already struggle every year with encouraging our students to make sure they walk. So this is going to be, this is really okay. going to hurt us at St. Pete College, I think. And, and we're really holding out. We have our ceremonies where the Tampa Bay Rays play baseball. That's where our ceremonies are. So as soon as this is lifted, wow. we, we will celebrate. That is, the, that is who we are. We rent out Indian okay. Rocks Church. We'll have seven ceremonies there if we have to. <laughs> When, oh, and, and awesome. beyond the fight. And that's okay because a lot of the students, like I said, remember my average student is about 38 years old. That's my average okay. student at the community college. And we will celebrate. So as soon as this lifts, there will be a celebration. So uh, it's oh, so important. Awesome. Well, we just don't want to lose these folks, you know, and we don't, we want them to celebrate their, their accomplishments. Right. And, and even though a lot of those students are online, we have a very long, large online program, but but we have nursing students that have worked so hard. And, and I can't yeah. even imagine being a student right now who's worked so hard and I can't graduate yeah. or walk. Yeah, that's a big yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah it, it certainly is, especially when you have your cap. And you, I know when, you know, even high school, um, people, that they decorate their caps. Yep. And, uh, you know, and walking across that stage and shaking a hand. And at the end, when you're able to turn that tassel on the other side, and it's like, you know, you know, Cat, this is over, <laughs> and I yep, made it. Yep. I'm decreed. Oh, this is awesome. I need to go party and get a job. You know, but um, yeah, but it's 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 a it's just that inner feeling. It's that 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 emotion, and your heart's just thumping in your chest, and it's so exciting, and it's so sad that these people they just can't can't do it. I mean, even if you're at home standing in front of your you know video monitor, you know, it's sort of like. Uh, it's not quite the same. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Not quite the same. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. All right, Greta, thanks for answering that. Thank you. You're welcome. So I feel like we've been bouncing around everywhere. We've all been talking about everything, and, you know, we we are really – I'm enjoying it. I know we're all having fun. <laughs> Is there anything, you know, specific to maybe not school? You know, we're adjusting. Everybody's adjusting, first of all, and that's something that we've been covering. You've mentioned that the adults that you're teaching, they're adjusting and they're switching gears because their schedules are, are being changed. Um, the kids, the spouses, the pets. I mean, everybody's just like, what is going on? Greta, do you feel like there's an area that we can expand more on or maybe focus more on um, such as life skills? Do you see anywhere that people are maybe lacking um, while we're going through this crisis and this adjustment of life that maybe we could focus on a little bit more? Yeah, I, I since we this um, pandemic and everybody has been staying at home, um, I subscribe to a lot of online learning tools, and I subscribe to so many of these, and I have gotten so many emails, and there is so much free education now being offered to people. So if you're home right now, there's a plethora of free courses that if you want to take them, and it could be anything from how to do web design or how to do, um, you know, something technical if you want to take to how do I become a better communicator, how do I um, 
develop listening skills. These courses are all free right now, a bunch of them. Even LinkedIn has opened up their courses to be free. How to learn PowerPoint, if that's what you want to study right now while we've got some down time. So I have had the opportunity to share some of these resources with my students, my college students, and, and I've got them watching webinars on crisis uh, management, and they all want to uh, exempt their papers, which I decided I would do that. I'm cringing because now they didn't write a paper for me, but that's okay. I actually sent out an email last week and said, if you attend one of these business management crisis seminars, I will take away one of your assignments, and they all did it. First time ever anyone's ever done an optional assignment. <laughs> you know, and, and so, yeah, there's free courses, LinkedIn. Um, the Khan Academy is free, so you can go to Khan Academy for anything. But podcasts, if they go out and they want to listen to a podcast from a business person, and because I teach business, obviously I want them to keep track of the stock market. So if you go out and look, go on NBC, CNBC, and, but, yeah, definitely soft skills. This is the opportunity right now that if we need to develop those, there are several courses online that are free right now. And, um, yeah, even Stanford cut their courses in half. So I can go out to Stanford and get a, and get a Ph.D. for only, you know, a million dollars instead of two million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> What a deal. Wow. What a deal. But hey, with Stanford, Stanford has a coupon code. You know the end of the world is coming. Stanford's on Groupon. I got a Groupon. Stanford's on Groupon. It's, it's really, but seriously, all these education uh, material people have all opened their doors to free, free material. So I've told my students and even people getting ready to go, I, my babysitter is, is just starting college. And I've even, you know, shown some of these sites to her for her to hone in on some of her skills now while she's taking her uh, basic classes. Because at SPC, we offer a bunch of, you know, the basic classes. And then students will then go on to FSU or University of Florida or Florida State. Okay. Yep. Okay. I see. Yeah, there's just so much out there. Um, and it can be overwhelming. Um, personally, you know, I'm trying to think off the top of my head and my, my brain is just spinning out of control. I feel like the hamster on the wheel is just like <laughs> dead. <laughs> There's so much. So for somebody like me, where would you point them? Is there a specific website that they could go to to just get some like general information and then branch out from there? Do you have anything like that to share? Yeah, I would discourage, I'm really not going to say something nice, but I would discourage uh, anyone from getting abc.com. I'm going to discourage people from that, and I'm going to tell you why. It's encouraging them to just sit on an iPad for four hours. So I would discourage AB, like an abc.com, and literally look at, uh, you've got a software on here on your list here. Uh, you guys sent me the, the interview, the school, not school, not school, dot school. Um, unschool, you know, dot school. unschool dot school and, and that's what I would start is looking at now in, in well, depending on the state that you're in in Florida we have access to the Florida virtual college and all that curriculum is approved so anything you want to do in there a course on you know anything my son did keyboarding and he did stuff like that um, you know that's that's free stuff LinkedIn I would go to LinkedIn take a look on there um, and just really just they're all offering stuff now, so there's really. But I would, I would really keep away from the from the acad these acad these paid academies where you pay twelve ninety nine a month and and you never yeah. use it kind of thing. So um, I'm going to be frank with you. We ordered some books on Amazon a couple months ago. My sister in law ordered a couple of these little notebooks for my seven year old because he needed some help with spelling. And those books are great, and they come right from what the teachers are teaching right from what they're teaching in classroom. The worksheets are right from that. So if you've got a younger toddler, you know, maybe say uh, first grade to fourth grade, these books are great. So you can even go out and get, and then that gives them physical writing. That's what I'm worried about the most for my seven-year-old. He has not had to write at all for four weeks. He has not been asked Ooh. to write. And no, he's writing Good for point. us. Oh, he's writing for me. Believe me, <laughs> you know, he's Good not point. happy about yeah. it. But um, there's, everything's typing. He's typing everything in the computer, and he, he needs help writing. So I would suggest That's that. I would suggest writing. Schedule. Go on the schedule, yeah. And it's something, something mm -hmm. fun. I mean, it can be fun. We went out. What did we do? We went out. The teacher made us go out and look at birds and stuff. So I made him write. 
I made him write it on cool. the notepad, and yeah, so it can be fun. It's, it's getting that's, creative. That's great advice yeah. on handwriting. I just want to chime in on that because I think our world in general is losing that skill. So I'm glad yes. you brought that up about handwriting. That we're typing too many things: iPhones, cell phones, laptops. So I'm glad that you brought that up. Yep. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and that actually a, reminds me. I've got a friend that she actually has created some handwriting books like what you were talking about, and they are on Amazon. I wonder if they're the same. Uh, yeah, it's whatever. If you just type in, if you yeah. just type in like activity books for second, third, and I would go a year up from your child. So if your child's in second grade, get a third grade book, and if yeah. they're in third grade, get get the fourth grade book. And and I'm gonna I'm gonna say something that my kids hate. They hate me so much, and I already told them. I don't care if they hate me, but they have to read every day, even yes, if it's five yeah. minutes sitting on the toilet. I hand them a book. <laughs> <laughs> and they have got to keep That's reading fun. because I'm telling you, they're not reading in school. They're not reading in school. And I, I know that. My son will come home. I'm like, what did you guys read in school today? My 11-year-old. Oh, well, uh, guess what? You're going to be in middle school. You're going to have eight textbooks. Yeah. And if you, can't, if you can't, yeah, so they read. Even if it's, even if it's 15 minutes a day, it's got to be something. Yeah. On the weekend, too. Yeah. Yes. Very cool. Okay. Well, we are way out of time. Um, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> don't be sorry. I love it. I, I want to hear more from you. I believe you're plugged into our Facebook group, the Trendsetter Mentor Group, um, so our listeners can find you there if they've got more questions. And just thank you so much for taking the time today. I know everybody's – we're all scheduled, and we all have busy schedules, but I really appreciate you uh, taking that time out of your schedule to join us here. So it's been fun. All right, guys. Um, also, thank you to Greta Kishbaugh, Brittany Macon, uh, our guests for sharing their personal and professional insights and journeys on homeschooling. And a special thank you to our Thrive Tribe, Noel Ramos, Sabrina Prochik, Sherry Thompson, Stacey Soley, Deidre Pittman, Carmen Miller, and Dana Washington for joining and leaning into today's discussions. Um, and a special thanks going out to our producer, Daryl Johnson, for getting the content organized. And our engineer, Alan, where he um, has been just nothing but amazing to us during our show. So we're very thankful for that team. And most of all, I wanted to thank our loyal listeners. Thank you for joining and tuning in every week. Next week, we're going to continue our conversation on how we can continue to thrive while dealing with this global crisis. Thank you all for taking the journey with us. Thriving Women Talk is powered by the Trendsetter Mentor Group, a membership for mentorship, and we are happy to have you here with us today. You can follow all of our hosts on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you're interested in joining the Trendsetter Mentor Group or being a guest on Thriving Women Talk, email Daryl Johnson at endpartners at yahoo.com. We believe you will continue to thrive, not just survive.